Today's Storehouse Storytime is brought to you by Dream Empire Publishing, focused on stories that move, touch, and inspire. Hi, friends, and welcome to Storehouse Storytime, you guys. I'm Ronnie, and today's story is called Georgia Gilmore. It's by J.P. Miller. You guys, we are celebrating Black History Month all February long. Well, all year long, but specifically in February. And so I wanted to highlight an author, again, J.P. Miller, wrote about Georgia Gilmore, and I am excited to share with you our friend Georgia. Have you ever wanted to be a volunteer? Where would you go to help? What skills do you have? Georgia Gilmore loved to cook. She used her cooking skills to help fund the Montgomery bus boycott. She was a leader in fundraising. Hot grease sizzled. Georgia put the last drumstick into the hot skillet. She was a great soul food cook. Fried chicken, macaroni and cheese, cakes and pies were her best dishes. Georgia sold her food at hair salons and barbershops. Her fried chicken and fish dinners were top sellers. She raised a lot of money. Georgia never paid herself one penny. At the end of the day, she split the money into two piles. One pile was to buy more food and supplies. The other she gave to civil rights leaders for the Montgomery bus boycott. When asked where the money came from, Georgia jokingly said, it came from nowhere. <laughs> she was a committee of one. Her club, the club from nowhere. <laughs> A crowd was outside the Holt Street Baptist Church. There was no more room inside and the pews were full and people stood against the walls. The day-long bus boycott was a success. Everyone was there to hear, to hear Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. He had a new plan of action. Georgia looked around. She was glad she left work early. She got a good seat. She would have no problem hearing Dr. King. Dr. King wanted to hit the city where it hurt most, their revenue. In order to create social change, the boycott had to run longer. He didn't want to stop until the buses were no longer segregated. He warned that it would take a lot of volunteers and money for his plan to work. Georgia was ready to help however she could. Ushers passed the offering basket. People put money in. It was a good start, but not enough. Dr. King asked everyone to use their own skills to help. They would need people to drive since they were boycotting the bus. They would need people to stay behind with children while adults went to protests. And they would need more money. The community answered. Drivers drove, babysitters sat with children, cooks cooked. Whatever was needed, members of the black community could do it. Georgia liked what Dr. King said. She knew exactly what she would do to help cook. She would sell her food and donate the money to the boycott. Georgia had been mistreated by a bus driver before. He took her fare and drove off before she could get on the bus. Georgia never forgot about that. That clash pushed her to help. That driver had messed with the wrong lady. Georgia's boss didn't like her being involved in the boycott. She was fired from her job as a chef. She didn't care. It gave her more time to manage the club from nowhere. She grew the club from one to over 40 members. They sold food all over in places such as beauty shops and churches. Georgia picked up the money they raised and dropped it off at the Holt Street Baptist Church. Her donations were crucial to helping the boycott going, to keeping the boycott going. The boycott lasted for 381 days. Dr. King loved Georgia's food. He urged her to open her own restaurant. 
Georgia thought that was a great idea. She turned her living room into a dining area. Her house was her restaurant. It was everybody's house and everyone was welcome. Dr. King and other civil rights leaders went there to eat and to have meetings. And here we see Dr. King at the end of the table. We see civil rights leaders meeting and eating. Georgia Gilmore stayed active in civil rights. She was part of a class action lawsuit to integrate public parks in Montgomery, Montgomery, Alabama. Georgia died on March 9, 1990 while cooking for people marching to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the march from Selma to Montgomery. And in 1995, the state of Alabama designated her home as a national landmark. The end. And you guys, Miss Georgia passed doing exactly what she loved doing. She dedicated her life to helping in a civil rights uh, manner. And so you guys, I wanna revisit a page really quickly because Dr. King advised us and there's so many times that we are advised in churches, in schools, or even at home to make sure that we are using our own resources, our own skills, our own gifts. Here on uh, page 13, it says it was a good start, but not enough. Dr. King asked everyone to use their own skills to help. And it's so important, you guys. You guys are all filled with so many amazing things about you guys. Some of you guys love to speak out um, in public. You love to pray. Some of you guys love to be creative. Some of you guys are really good with your hands. You can do all these different special um, crafts with your hands. But however you are gifted in these different areas, use your skills to volunteer to do amazing things in the world. I know you guys can do it. I absolutely love this story about um, Miss Georgia Gilmore. It's a true story, but it's a story nonetheless by um, author J.P. Miller. So you guys, grab your own copy. It's Black History Month, you guys. Let's celebrate our black community. Thank you guys for an amazing Storehouse Storytime. Have a fantastic week.